In this video, we're going to learn the difference between identity and access management and S3 bucket policies for managing access to your S3 resources. I wanted to make this video because these two concepts are a little bit similar and they're both used to manage access to resources. However, they're useful in two very different use cases. So in the next few minutes, we're going to quickly recap IAM and S3 bucket policies, talk a little bit about when to use one over the other, and then finally, I'm going to show you an example of an S3 bucket policy demo in the AWS console. So let's just jump right into it. And first of all, I just want to start with a very brief recap of what IAM is. So IAM stands for Identity and Access Management. And the main unit in IAM are IAM policies. And policies define what actions are allowed or denied on resources. Now, resources are the entities that you create in AWS. So this could be an S3 bucket, it could be an S3 object, a Lambda function, a DynamoDB table, anything like that. And IAM policies are just JSON objects that define who has access to specific resources. So let's take a really quick look at a very simple IAM policy right now. So you can see here in this IAM policy document, uh, we can see that the effect is allow in this case. The effects can either be allow or deny. The actions define what permissions we are granting the person or entity that's going to have this policy. So in this case, we're giving the person the Lambda create function access. And then the resource is the particular asset that we want to apply this policy to. So the star simply means wildcard, but you can specify the ARN or Amazon resource name of a particular resource like an S3 object or S3 bucket if you're trying to manage the permission that way. So with this policy, if we give this to a particular user, the user will be able to, they'll be allowed to call the create function API. Now a thing to remember with IAM, especially in the context of bucket policy, is that IAM policies get attached to users, roles, or groups. Now, users are typically people that have their own dedicated login on an AWS account. Roles can apply to both users slash people or other AWS applications like a Lambda function or even an EC2 instance. And then you also have groups, which are just collections of users that all fall within the same kind of category and therefore have the same sets of permissions. Now, one other thing about IAM that's important to realize is that there's a concept of implicit denies and explicit denies. These are two very different things. Now, an implicit deny simply means that if you are not given the permission to do something through a policy statement, then you will not be able to do it. <laughs> Sounds pretty simple. So in other words, if our user does not have a policy statement that allows us to create a function like what we're seeing down here, then we will not be able to do it. It's just kind of implied. If you're not given the permission to do something, then you are not allowed to do it. It's implicit. Now, the other form of denials is what is called explicit denies. And explicit denies is when the policymaker specifically says this particular user role or group is not allowed to do this specific thing. And explicit denies will always take priority over any other allow statement. So if you have two different statements, one is saying allow and the other one is saying deny for a same resource and the same API, then the deny is going to always win. That is the rule of AWS and IAM. So keep that in mind because we're going to be talking about bucket policies and how they can overlap with IAM. So that may become relevant. All right, so let's move on now and talk about S3 bucket policies and how they are used. So S3 bucket policies are a little bit different because they are similar in that they are policies, but they get attached to the resources, which are the S3 buckets and objects in this case. And the thing that makes the bucket policies a little bit different besides the fact that they're attached to the asset or the resource is that the permissions get applied to a principle. And the principle in the lingo of AWS is just kind of a person or an application that is specified in the statement. So when we're looking at bucket policies, they're gonna contain an extra field that we didn't have in the IAM policy statement in the previous example, and that's gonna specify the particular user, role, account ID, et cetera, that that statement is going to apply to. So let's take a look at an example really quick to understand what this looks like. So this is a IAM policy statement. This one is for an S3 bucket because we're talking about S3 bucket policies. Uh, so similar to before, we have an allow effect here. So we're saying whatever actions are in this statement, we want the user to have these actions. 
And then you can see here, in this case, we have a new key. So we have a principal, which contains an AWS key, and there's a list of ARNs. And these ARNs, or Amazon resource names, are, are of the IAM type. So you can see here, we're specifying a particular account ID, and then there's a colon. After the colon is a user. This can also be a role. It could also be the root account or something else. But since we're talking about the user, we're saying the user with the ID Daniel in this account ID is allowed to perform this action. The action is S3 colon star. That's a wild card. That means that this user is allowed to perform all S3 actions. However, all S3 actions only on these resources. So we have two uh, elements in this list here. The first one is the S3 bucket itself. So you're allowed to perform any operation on the bucket. And then this notation here with a slash star means any of the contents of the bucket. So you can see where IEM and bucket policies are a little bit different. We're attaching the policy statement in this case directly onto the bucket, my bucket in this case. And with IEM, we're attaching that directly onto the user. Now there's also another concept, which is kind of a legacy concept, um, and bucket policies replace these things. These things are called ACL or access control lists. These are a legacy way to manage permissions to your S3 bucket and objects. And the guidance from AWS is to no longer use ACLs. They are still supported, however. And if you're trying to manage permission to your buckets or objects in a bucket, to use uh, bucket policies over ACLs. So now I quickly want to talk about uh, some of the good to knows in terms of using bucket policies and IEMs and when you should use one over the other. Uh, so the first thing to realize when we're, we're managing permissions for S3 in particular with bucket policies is that IEM and resource-based policies or bucket policies can be used together. So for example, if I'm the administrator of an AWS account and I want to give one of my developers or one of my engineers pretty much global access to S3 except for one very important administrative bucket that I don't want him or her to touch at all, what I can do is that I I can give that user's IAM policy statement a very liberal set of permissions, perhaps S3 colon star to indicate all permissions. And then if I want to lock down that particular bucket, so I don't want him or her to touch that, I can put a resource-based policy on that bucket to deny all operations unless they come from me, the administrator. So this is a way that you can combine these two things together to get some very sophisticated kind of access control to your resources. Whole bunch of other combinations IEM policy statements are super, super uh, detailed and powerful. Um, and I'll show you kind of an example of this when we get to the demo in the console. Now, a handy little visual to help you understand how IAM evaluates whether or not uh, someone has permissions to a resource is through a really great flowchart like you can see here. Uh, so I'm not going to walk you through all the steps, um, but the ones that we're talking about here are these two center ones that belong to resource-based policies and identity-based policies. But you can pause the video, take a look at how this works. So you may be wondering when S3 bucket policies are useful, like when should I be using them over something like IEM? Um, so the guidance from AWS and in my experience, S3 bucket policies are very useful for cross account access management to your S3 buckets and its resources. And the reason that's the case is because if you want to grant permissions to a user on a different account, access to your S3 bucket or objects in your S3 bucket, it's just basically a one line change by adding that user's account, user or role in the S3 bucket policy. If you want to give the user access to your S3 bucket through IEM, you'd have to create a role that has those permissions to that resource, then establish a trust relationship with the other person's account ID, and then that other person's account also needs to have S3 permissions. You can do it, but it's just more complicated, more moving parts, and just more ways to time in general, this is by far the easiest way to do it if you want to manage uh, external users on your bucket and objects or just have all of your permissions for your S3 resources in one spot. Those are two really good reasons to use S3 bucket policies over IAM. Uh, the other thing to know about S3 bucket policies is that they support larger sizes in terms of their policy documents. The policy documents support up to 20 kilobytes in size. 
versus four kilobytes with IAM. Um, so because they support cross account access management, I suppose the expectation is you're going to be potentially adding many more uh, policy statements for many more different users and groups of folks and all that. So they give you extra size here over five times as much size when compared to a normal IAM policy document. Right. So now I want to jump into a really quick demo to show you how this works in the AWS console. Okay, so here I am in the AWS console. I have a bucket here that contains a single file, just a CSV file, and I've added a bucket policy onto this bucket to manage access to it. So the way you get access to it is that you go to the permission section of the AWS console, then you scroll down here, and this is the bucket policy that I have attached. You can also click edit here. By the way, there's a really good um, kind of wizard thing that helps you set up your bucket policies if you click on it. Uh, you can see a little bit about how it works. You can choose the actions. Um, you can also, if I scroll down, add the resources, add the conditions. So it just basically makes it very easy for you to construct these statements. But let's take a look at what I have here. So what I'm saying here on this S3 bucket is that we are going to deny every user that tries to call S3 get object on this file, on, on vehicles.csv. However, I have a condition and the condition in combination with the effect is kind of a double negative. So we're saying here, we wanna deny all users if their IP address is not 1234. So in other words, this will allow users that have 1234 as their IP address. Now, since my IP address is not 1234, if I go try to download or call get object on this vehicles.csv, this is not going to work. So let's try that really quick. So I'm gonna go back to vehicles.csv. I'm gonna try and click on download now. And we got access denied here. So you can see that is definitely working correctly. So let's go back really quick. And now I'm just gonna remove that bucket policy off of it. So we're gonna go back to our buckets. We're gonna to go to permissions. And now I want to remove this bucket policy. So I'm just gonna delete the whole thing now. And we are going to save that. And now I'm gonna go back to my objects and we're gonna to try to download this again and you should see that it will work. So download and we just downloaded it and it's on my other screen here. Um, let me just bring this in here. Yeah, there you go. So you can see it's just a very simple uh, CSV file. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how S3 bucket policies work. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.